Peter Gresser uh, does, did the music for this game, and I figure this is a good time to talk about him because this is my favorite tune of the whole game, uh, the one that you will listen to in this room, this crazy electronica stuff. He did the music for Shiva, um, and I think he really went all out with this game. He really kind of um, he made it more uni the music more unified, and it's uh, really cool. It's this kind of very um, mystical electronica soundtrack, which I wasn't expecting. I was not expecting this electrical synth stuff. And I think it kind of works because it does kind of give you that feeling of uneasiness and something that's kind of not right, which I, I kind of dug. And uh, Peter uh, is a great musician. You should check out his MySpace page. Um, I, I linked to it on the Wild Jedi website. You can go there because I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, Peter Gresser, he's, he's really good. Um, if you ever need music, you should check him out. Adrian Tucker is this guy's name, and you might re remember that the actor playing Adrian, his name is Thomas Tucker, and originally I named the character after Thomas. Uh, that was before I cast Thomas in the role, and then I, I just forgot, <laughs> so that's where that came from. It's funny listening to Roses agree not to use his name in the article because uh, I've forgotten all about that. And if you uh, play Blackwell Convergence, uh, the next game that stars Rosa, uh, the article that Rosa wrote is on her wall. And you can read it, and it says right there in the article, Adrian Tucker said that blah, 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 blah. And um, I didn't even uh, realize this at the time, but it's just kind of funny that Rosa did end up using his name. So I guess she's not the most ethical of journalists. I admit that this section I was a little worried about. You're suddenly told by a character you've never heard of to go to a location you've never been to and talk to characters that you've never heard of about the death of another character you've never heard of. So it was kind of, uh, I was worried it was very sudden and very jarring to suddenly kind of shift gears entirely. And whenever this was beta tested, when I would, I would give it to a new beta tester, the first thing I would always ask them when they got uh, significantly far is, did this seem strange? Did this seem jarring? And no one seemed to mind. Uh, no one said anything. So I kind of took a step back and I said, okay, I guess it's fine. If these guys, these very these very strict anal beta testers, believe me, these guys are picky. Uh, if they didn't say anything, then I'd like to think it's okay. I prided myself on hiring actors for most every role in this game. But the guy playing Adrian here, his name is Thomas Tucker. He is the only professional voice actor and you can tell just by listening to him you will hear no breath pops you will hear everything is pitch perfect uh he kind of sat down and did it and knew exactly how to breathe and i actually um i probably uh and if obviously i'm thinking of doing this and by the time this is released if i decided to i would have already have done it um having his uh voice over um the raw uh, voiceover footage. I don't know if you can call it footage, but yeah, you, all that available for people to listen to. Because I think um, for for games especially, people don't know how to direct voice actors. And I'm I'm learning. Uh, I'm not very. I've learned a lot through the process, but I'm still learning. And there's so much to do with breathing and breathing in the right spot. And uh, Thomas was really good about that. He would whenever he would say a line, he would just go. <sighs> and hold in the breath and then say the line and then he would breathe like he would just be so aware of his breathing because it sounds really ugly when you don't breathe correctly and I know that I um, wasn't always successful in getting the actors to breathe correctly uh, throughout the course of this game so uh, Thomas was awesome and uh, you could tell it's a shame he got one of the smallest roles in the game if had I known he, he was such a pro I would have given him a larger role um, I wouldn't have given him Joey because because Abe's Joey but I would have given him uh, someone somebody else uh, but definitely uh, we'll look at watch out for Thomas in future games because he's definitely gonna stick around because uh, when you find a good thing you, you don't get rid of it so uh, yeah this notebook thing has become a, a Blackwell staple since it was introduced here. Um, it has its drawbacks, uh, unfortunately. The major problem with it, and it's took, taken me a while and I still haven't quite worked out the kinks four games later, the biggest problem with it is that um, it's not a very intuitive way to, um, to go through a game. Uh, you make a connection in your head. And you just naturally assume that the character on screen has made that same connection. But no, you have to go into that notebook interface, connect the clues there in order for the character you're playing to make the same connection. And inevitably, uh, with every single Black Hole game that has this interface, um, the places where people get stuck are the places where you have to combine clues. 
without fail, that's where people inevitably get stuck. If they get stuck, it's there. And um, it's funny. So when I got to Blackwell Convergence, the third game in the series, I decided to remove the clues interface completely. And there was a bit of a backlash. Uh, people really missed having being able to combine clues. Uh, it was really surprising because I just thought the system was so broken, but people really missed it. So for Blackwell Deception, the fourth game in the series, I, I brought it back and I... I kind of fine-tuned it a bit, so it's a little bit more intuitive to use. It still has some problems, but I do like the system because it's a very, uh, it, it's really appropriate for a mystery game. Uh, rather than having to use inventory on stuff, you're using clues and information. So for a mystery type game, it works really well. Uh, it's not terribly intuitive, even after four games of, of using it, but uh, I still think it, it works really well in terms of solving a mystery. You might have heard me earlier say that I, I don't like accents. Um, or rather, I prefer not to work with them. But uh, the girl playing Kelly here, her name is Chen Young Shu. Uh, she's a really versatile actress. Uh, she I originally had her in mind for the role of Allie, which is the sad, lonely ghost that you'll see later on. And uh, I hope you've played through the game already, because uh, that's not the only thing I'm going to be giving away. But um, I said to Chen, I said, "Hey, you know, you're perfect for Allie." Uh, I know you can do that, but it's such a small role, and I just felt like I was wasting her. Uh, and I said, hey, how do you feel about doing two characters? And I gave her the script for Allie, and she read it. And kind of as a joke, at one point, she read it in that in this tough Brooklyn's Queens accent. And I said, hey, that's, that's awesome. Let's do it that way. Because I, th I figured with the accent, it would really differentiate between the two roles. And admittedly, you know, my experience with accents has not been great. Uh, as I said earlier, people tend to focus more on getting the accent right than into acting. And uh, I had the same problem here. And I, uh, this is no fault of Chen. She originally did not really want to do the accent. Uh, she was originally trying to go for this kind of goth girl thing. But I'm like, no, do the accent. I kind of really insist on it because I wanted the two characters to be to sound different and so I, I insisted to do the accent but don't put too much effort into it just kind of make it there like don't really don't worry about being authentic it's just like just kind of let it come but speak naturally and I think it did a good job I, I put the two voices together just as a test and they sound pretty different and the characters are so different that I, I don't think people the beta testers didn't seem to mind no one seemed to mind so uh, I think it worked so um yeah, if anyone needs a lady voice actress, uh, get in touch with me. I'll, I'll get you in touch with Chen because uh, she's awesome. Thanks. It's funny listening to that character, Kelly, now because uh, back then in the dark ages of 2006, I was very new to everything. I was new to VO recording, and I didn't even think about breath pops. And breath pops meaning stuff like this when you uh, talk too close to the mic and your breath ruins stuff you say. Uh, I never thought about that. I never thought about trying to uh, avoid them or even minimizing them or editing them out uh, in post-production. I didn't do any of that. And so uh, I, I just left them all in. And I just, now, after five years and like eight or nine games of, of doing VO, I've become a lot more skilled in listening for breath pops during recording and removing them in post. Um, but now, listening to all this, I think Kelly is a particularly bad offender. And later, I think the deacon also uh, breathes a lot <laughs> into the mic. Uh, if, if only actors didn't need to breathe, things would be so much easier. If you played the original uh, version of this game, you might have noticed one small change, is that the fonts look a little different. And it was a, a quirk of the old version of the engine. The The game was uh, it's 320 by 240 resolution, which might seem small, and it is, but the engine can you know, double, triple the, uh, the graphics uh, up to fit uh, your monitor. Um, but back then, you were, there was this trick where you could uh, trick the engine into displaying high-resolution fonts even in a low-resolution game. Uh, so I was able to have nice-looking fonts uh, for most of the dialogue and, and everything in the game. Uh, unfortunately, that, um, that loophole, that trick, no longer works in the current version of Adventure Game Studio. So I had to go with each of the three games, um, which all used high-res fonts, I had to go and find low-resolution fonts uh, for everything, and which kind of seemed weird. For an upgrade, I had to downgrade all the fonts, and it's a little disappointing because they're not as nice and, and crisp and clear as they used to be, but there was no way around it. There was absolutely no way to display high-res fonts in a low-res game uh, in the newest version of AGS, so um, sorry about that. There's nothing that could be done. 
Joey can certainly make an entrance. The, uh, of course, the man behind the ghost, his name is Abe Goldfarb. You might remember him from, uh, from Shiva. He did the voice of Rabbi Stone in the Shiva. And Joey is, of course, a much different character than Rabbi Stone. Uh, it actually took Abe a little while to kind of get the hold of Joey, get the hang of it. Um, he tended to drift into Rabbi mode occasionally. And actually, when he finally nailed the character, he wanted to start over and do it all again because he, that's how professional Abe is. He really wanted it to be, to be good. I always count myself very lucky that one of my closest friends is also one of the, the best actors I know. Uh, there's actually this kind of running joke in terms of voice acting in games where they always say how the developers hired their friends and relatives to do the voices. Um, and that's exactly what I did. But fortunately, my friend can, can actually act. So uh, working with Abe is always a blast because um, he's just a lot of fun. He's very funny. You listen to the bloopers at the end and, and you'll see. Um, but he also has very good instincts when it comes to uh, reading. Uh, he requires very little direction and sometimes he would make very good suggestions. And, and most of them, I would say, uh, <laughs> 75 to 90 percent of his suggestions I would actually take. So uh, Abe always makes every project shine. If you're interested in the uh, conception of ideas, the idea to use the dog park as a haunted place was when, again, I was looking after my friend's dog, and it was late at night, and the dog needed a walk. So I put the leash on the dog, walked out to Washington Square Park, and went to the dog park. Uh, went in there, opened the gate, let him in, and I looked around, and it was very creepy there at night. Uh, it's just, just looking around, it was empty, it was dark, and it was just, I don't know, it was creepy. And it just seemed like a good place to set a ghost story. So that's where that came from. So here is Chen's second role, that of Ali, the, the sad, lonely ghost. And she did a really good job here. She really, this is the sort of thing that she normally does anyway. When I got the, uh, when I got her audition reel, it was all like sad, lonely, confused girl. And I'm like, ah, perfect for Ali. Um, but I also saw how tough she could be, so I figured she could do Kelly as well. But here, um, the voice echoes. And at first I debated whether or not I should make the voice echo because uh, Joey's voice doesn't echo. Um, but I didn't want to make Joey echo because uh, it would get away, get in the way of the acting too much. And Abe has a, a wide range, and Joey has such a wide range of emotions that I didn't want to uh, have the echo mask that. And Allie, it didn't matter as much because she's really just playing one emotion uh, for the whole time. So it wouldn't really affect that too much. And plus the echo makes her scary and, and all mysterious and stuff. And I, I kind of like that. And um, I put it... Uh, before the beta testers and asked them what they thought and they said, yeah, definitely make Allie's voice echo. So uh, I made a voice echo and I think it works well. Chris Fimo, the guy who did this background and the Washington Square Park backgrounds, uh, did a game a few years ago called Enclosure, which uh, was done in a, with an engine called AGI, um, which, which creates these really old school, I mean even more old school than this game, old school Sierra style, I'm talking low resolution, blocky graphics, and uh, he made a really great game using that engine, just to say he could. And it's a, it came as a surprise when uh, I first got in touch with him to learn that he could really seriously draw the hell out of a background. Uh, he kind of went the AGI route as a personal challenge, just to see if he could take those old school blocky graphics and make them sing. And he really did. Enclosure is, in, is an incredible game. And when he had a, a much wider palette to use, you can just look at this background here. I mean, he just did some amazing stuff with it. So he, um, it's actually quite, actually quite, that's the coolest thing ever, that he, he made that AGI game just because he could. Just because he wanted to prove that he could, he could do something with it. And I find that very, very admirable. So good, good going, Chris. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm lucky to have him on board. All right, I have to apologize. I showed this game, I showed this scene to some friends at a, uh, what was, at, at a party recently. And um, apparently I don't have a, as dirty a mind as I thought, but apparently these lines that you just heard could be taken in rather a, um, a dirty fashion. Um, the tie could be a metaphor for something else, and it could be read that way. And I totally <laughs> did not think that when I was writing this. Uh, I guess I am a lot more innocent than I, than I thought. But if anyone out there was offended, if you have any, any little ones that are, that are crying and are upset and are scarred for life, I do apologize. <laughs> I love that falling animation. I could watch it all day. Um, Ian managed to do a falling animation, and what's special about this falling animation, I, I, I don't know if you can tell, but it's all within the same frame. Like when Rosa walks, it's in uh, a frame, 
and he managed to make Rosa fall within that same frame. It's uh, the exact same width and length as the walking frame. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, if you know what I'm talking about, you could, you'll understand it's quite a quite an achievement to to have Rosa fall in such a narrow narrow frame space. Uh, and Ian um, is an amazing amazing animator. This guy uh, took the indie gaming world by storm with his Apprentice series a few years ago. He just came out with a game called Super Jazz Man. Um, I haven't actually played it because it literally just came out today, but I have been busy working on this game, as you probably know. Uh, but I hear it's awesome, so check it out. Uh, he just did, he turned into Superman towards the end. He just delivered sprites and animations so fast, it was like, uh, held the guy up at gunpoint. It, he was, he did amazing stuff. So, uh, good job, Ian, all around. This is another big old info dump about, uh, Joey and Rosa in the world and having the things they do, the whole the whole tie thing, the whole uh, void thing. Um, that's all uh, a big, big, big info dump. And uh, I mentioned before how that's a bad idea. Uh, and I did it again. <laughs> I did it twice in the same game. Uh, yeah, again, another, what was I thinking, an apology moment. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Believe it or not, I came up with this concept on a bus driving uh, to Cardiff, Wales. <laughs> I was just visiting some friends uh, to an event called Britain's, an adventure game studio meetup. Uh, I was on a bus trying to hash out the plot ideas for the series, and um, I came up with this place, mainly because I knew that Rosa was going to free all these ghosts, and it was getting way too complicated. I, I, I had this idea that each one would be freed in a kind of metaphorical way, and it just got so complicated, and I just decided to keep it very simple. I wanted the logic to remain the same for each ghost. They are freed by pulling them into this, you know, uh, this place, which I called Node Space. I don't know how I came up with that name. Uh, it's a stupid name, but I call it Node Space. I don't call it that in the game. But um, I came up with Node Space is just the way to get the ghosts out and on, out and on their way. And it's simple, and the concept works, and you could do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be expanding the, the whole mystique of this place later on. So uh, right now, um, it's very basic, it's functional, it does the job. Uh, later on, there's some funky things that are going to happen here, so uh, stay tuned.